Do I have concerns for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak? Yes. Monster Hunter Rise is by no means a bad Monster Hunter game. It has many redeeming qualities. Many quality of life changes implemented in Monster Hunter World remain in Rise and allow the title to expand upon them. But that doesn't mean Rise did everything right. Now this is not a hate piece on Monster Hunter Rise. No, no, no. This is more of a list of concerns that Monster Hunter Rise brought up that may or may not be addressed when Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak is released. Some of the biggest issues that the community have brought up include how fast movement is namely due to wire bugs, allowing you to zip around the environment super quick, almost breaking the laws of physics. This sometimes can make things feel a little bit floaty with the lack of weight that we felt in Monster Hunter World Iceborne and those before. It's going to get to the point where we can start making that Call of Duty joke, boots on the ground, for Monster Hunter. The use of wire bugs would also allow you to recover quickly from being hit in combat, which for me, made the hunts feel a little bit easy, shall we say. Whilst I can understand allowing Hunter minimal downtime when it comes to recovering from a hit, I felt that we had a decent enough recovery time in previous titles. With Sunbreak, it's unlikely that these changes with the wire bugs will be addressed, as the wire bugs are an integral part of Monster Hunter Rise. They are part of its core mechanics, and I suspect it may be enhanced upon in some form, but it's very unlikely to be changed or reduced. The increase in speed also resulted in the monsters themselves becoming faster so they can keep up with the hunters and still pose a threat. Although for most monsters I don't think this really worked. I think that most people will agree that apart from the top tier monsters, you can quite easily whip around the monsters with ease, making them less challenging than they were in previous titles. The higher tier monsters as well also had reduced window of opportunity for the hunters to attack, which I assume was an attempt to make things tougher for the hunters, but could also lead to frustration. When Sunbreak comes around, I doubt this will change much, as it's one of the aspects that the monsters have to actually counter the new mobility of hunters. Maybe more tricks to combat wirebugs themselves would have helped the monsters and thus allow some monsters to have movement relevant to their size, especially bulky monsters, but alas, I doubt this will change with Sunbreak. Sticking with monsters, some of the challenge event quests are both a joy and pain. I'm referring to the Apex Emergency quests. While the challenge itself is fine and enjoyable, especially in groups, I find that the Apex monsters involved have simply had their damage scaling increased to the point of potentially one-shotting hunters rather than any new attack that would allow them to do that kind of damage. While I understand implementing new attacks would be difficult and time-consuming, World and Iceborne achieve this with Arch-Tempered Monster event quests. This I can see changing with Sunbreak. Apexes will probably remain as a high-tier monster to hunt, but if they were to add a harder version of Apexes, it is possible they will receive moves worthy of one-shotting hunters. Remember as well, with the introduction of Master Rank, we will see new moves for all monsters as well, which is a good thing as it adds variety. Speaking of variety, one of the aspects of Rise that irked me was the Silkbind attacks, which is linked to the weapons themselves. In previous Monster Hunter games, every weapon had its own set of major pros and cons. The dual blades were fast, but its individual hits were weak. The greatsword hit very hard, but it had the movement speed of a tortoise with a missing leg. It was a nice balance that made each weapon feel like its own character. They were set apart from one another, different, which made it very appealing. But with Monster Hunter Rise and the introduction of Silkbind and Switch moves, it feels like every weapon can now do everything. The Greatsword, for example, still hits hard, but it also has tools to allow it to move fast, negating that negative aspect that the weapon had. Almost every weapon has its ability to allow them to move fast, hit hard, counter a monster, and so on ultimately removing or reducing the identity of each weapon to the point where some people will rarely play them anymore. Can some break fixes though? Well, Capcom have already said that they are going to be introducing new Silkbind attacks, which I assume means that there'll probably be new Switch skills too. I doubt they will address this issue in all honesty, but it may give hunters more options to pick a move that takes the weapon's pro aspect to the next level, tempting players to take a Silkbind move over others. For example, let's look at the Greatsword again. The new Silk Bind attack may allow the Greatsword to perform a massive hard hitting move straight away, but will replace the Power Sheave, which was the Greatsword's movement Silk Bind ability, thus the Greatsword becoming a slow weapon to use, but allowing it to hit even harder. But this is speculation, and I personally doubt it will be the case, I just hope it will be. One aspect of Rise that seemed to upset a lot of players was the lack of build variety, especially at the end game. 
hell, half of my channel is making builds for Monster Hunter, and I couldn't really make more than two or three builds, endgame builds, for each of the weapons, which is on the lower end of the scale when it comes to Monster Hunter games. This could be in part due to the lack of no Apex armor or weaponry, as well as the lack of alpha and beta sets. This, of course, can be addressed with Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Both allow an Apex armor to be crafted, as well as the introduction of new monsters should allow for build variety. Decorations also played a big part in the build variety issue as well, as we didn't have to grind for them no longer. This was both a good and bad thing, to be honest. It removed the RNG aspect behind decorations, which was a godsend for Monster Hunter World and Iceborne players, as that was by far one of the worst aspects of that title. But at the same time, it removed that end game grind that farming decorations provided us. I do hope that some break will continue to let us craft decorations, yes, but maybe they can make them a little bit more difficult to craft, so it gives us more incentive to farm monsters, whilst at the same time I also hope that Sunbreak introduces new decorations, especially the um, Mighty Bow Jewel. But this links us onto another issue that the community had, which was there was no real end game with Monster Hunter Rise. Rise did not have much of an incentive for players to continue farming past, say, Hunter Rank 100 to be honest. Decorations could easily be achieved, not a bad thing, the monsters themselves were kind of easy. There was no ultimate endgame challenge like Arch Tempered Monsters and no big bad like Vitalis or Alatrion. Yes, we had the Apex Emergency event quests, but they did not offer rewards akin to the Arch Tempered Monsters of World, reducing the incentive to tackle them. Sunbreak I'm sure will address this, at least I hope it does. How though is the question? A Gaiden Lands type area? Maybe. Tough endgame monsters like Vitalis? More than likely. Better endgame weapons and armor? I really hope so, but this is one area that I am confident that Sunbreak will address. I hope I'm not wrong, but I hope this challenge is not in the form of Rampages. Having recently asked the community if they enjoyed Rampages, the majority said no. It seems that people found them tedious and a little too drawn out, which I must agree with. Whilst I didn't hate Rampages, I didn't enjoy them either. They felt like a chore, which is a shame. They were, in a way, similar to how I felt about sieges and other set pieces found in other Monster Hunter titles. Okay to do once or twice, but not farm multiple times. But can Sunbreak address this? Well, from the little we know of Sunbreak, I'd say maybe. As we are not really based in Kimura Village for the story of Sunbreak, the threat of the Rampages is not really there now. This could change of course, and I suspect we may have to deal with one or two Rampages during the story, but I don't believe there will be as many. Of course, there are bound to be other little issues here and there, and I'm sure you each have your own personal issues you have with the game. I personally, for one, hope they scrap or rework the talisman melding mechanic, as that was a major RNG grind that could make or break builds. I personally hated that there was very little way to influence the RNG when it came to this talisman melding process. Other issues could include the weapon balance, as well as the fact that elements and ailments don't seem to be as useful, shall we say. But these two issues can be potentially resolved with patches and updates. I have faith that Sunbreak will address these two issues. There is also one other area that annoys me, and I don't know if Sunbreak will be able to address this, which is the Gathering Hub. The Gathering Hub being restricted to only 4 players was kind of a downgrade from the 16 players we had with Monster Hunter World and Iceborne. Whilst this is probably not an issue for solo players or players who play in dedicated small groups, for me personally it was frustrating. I would like to see the bigger lobbies. It doesn't have to be 16 players, it could be 8 players. I would just like to see bigger Gathering Hubs, seeing more hunters running around the area doing their own thing. and allowing us to group up with multiple teams without having to actually change the lobby completely. So Sunbreak has a lot riding on it. But to end on a more positive note, we are getting more monsters for sure, which in all honesty are the stars of Monster Hunter. If we're following patterns from previous Monster Hunter games, we're bound to get subspecies and variants of the new monsters introduced with Monster Hunter Rise. So another form of Akhnasam, Bishitan, Tetranodon, Somnicanth, Ratnikudaki, and of course Magnum Malo. These I cannot wait to see. We'll also get brand new monsters and returning monsters from previous Monster Hunter games. So this should add more variety to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. But despite all this, I am trying to remain optimistic, but I cannot deny that I ultimately have concerns to what Sunbreak will bring to the table. Now please don't get me wrong, I don't hate Monster Hunter Rise. I actually do enjoy the game and I do think it is a good game. It's just not as good as some other Monster Hunter titles. One of the big takeaways from this and what is on my mind is that when Monster Hunter World first launched, I was still playing it 
a year after its launch quite religiously. The fact that it was constantly getting content in the form of the Kulftaroth Siege, as well as Arch-Tempered Monsters, as well as additional monsters during its lifespan definitely helped keep players' attention. Rise seems to have been lacking this, and we are approaching that one year anniversary of Rise, and I am not nearly playing it as much as I was World during its first year, which is a shame, and which is why I hope Sunbreak will alleviate and address all the concerns that I have, making it an even better game than it is. But what are your thoughts? Please leave a comment down below, and until next time, I've been Dabley, bringing my concerns about Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak.